Hello and welcome to a new video about hydraulics. This time we're going to talk about filters. Who said hydraulics are maybe or they are very sensitive. Due to high pressures, also small particles might do a lot of damage. There can be narrow gaps somewhere where really the dirt is pushed in by these high pressures and so on. So they are quite sensitive and we do have also a lot of sliding things inside there. Yeah? And if we have inside dirt, dust, yeah, particles, they will destroy. And, and those sliding, sliding surfaces, they also do have sealing purposes. And if there's a scratch inside and the sealing is no, no good anymore, then have a lot of leakage oil and so on. No. We should really prevent this. This is why we use filters. We do have several different uh, numbers around filter. One number is the absolute value. The absolute value. The, the, the numbers given with filters are usually given in micrometers. Okay. So have, we have some micrometers, microns, uh, micrometer. This is the value of the filter. There is an absolute value. Uh, it means that's the largest possible element which can pass the filter theoretically yeah? so if the absolute value is 50 microns uh, 50 micrometer then everything smaller than 50 micrometer can pass a particle above 50 micrometer can never pass okay that's the absolute value then there is also the value for uh, the nominal value yeah? Nominal values means that if the particle is flushed several times through the filter, so not at the first, not at the second, several times, yeah, then it's likely to be held back. Yeah. This is because the, the average pore size inside the filter is also given, yeah, and the average pore size is, you know, it's an average value. There might be larger pores, there might be smaller pores and, and so on. So it's the bigger a certain element is, the likelier it is that it will not pass simply. Therefore, we're using the so-called beta value. Okay, so there's the beta value. And there is also given in microns. Yeah? So if there is written, for instance, beta 50 equals 10, yeah? then this means a particle of 50 microns, 50 micrometer, yeah? there are 10 times more particles before the filter than after the filter. before then after okay that's that's the beta value for instance i have here such filter element i can show you how this looks like this is a typical filter element on one side it's closed on the other side it's open and the oil is going from, now you can imagine, hopefully, yeah, the oil is going from one side to the other side. And in between, yeah, there is the filter element. The filter has a certain holes inside, yeah, like said, and the beta value gives how many bit particles are before the filter and after the filter. Yeah. So this is a filter cartridge, and these cartridges they will get clogged after a while yeah, because they simply hold back the particles 
and if they are full, if they are clogged, I have to replace this cartridge. Yeah? Usually the things are built in, there's a casing, a filter casing, yeah? which can be screwed. And in there, there is this filter cartridge. Okay? There is the skill filter cartridge located. Yeah? The inside and the outside. Yeah? And above here, we have a certain design that we come in here yeah? and go out here. Okay, so one side is connected to one and the other side is connected and then the oil has to pass and in which direction yeah? let's watch this again so there is the hole yeah? there is the hole every field element or every round element what do you think is easier to crush it yeah? or to extend it of course it's easier to crush. So our fresh oil or our oil which will be filtered will go here and leave here. Yeah? So we go in at the inner part of the filter. Yeah? That's the direction we go in. And at, at the outer part of the filter, so the filter will be streamed from inside to the outside yeah? because simply if the filter gets clogged yeah, there is more streaming resistance yeah? so here I have a certain pressure P1 here I have a certain pressure P2 and in between I have a delta P yeah? this delta P is higher yeah, than the more the filter is clogged, the more delta P will rise. Yeah? If there is no flow running through, delta P is zero. You really have to be aware of this. Yeah? So the peak values of, of pressure difference between the dirty and the clean side is when you really have a lot of oil running through. Yeah? Because then simply this will not pass. This is also a certain value for a filter. Yeah? That, that's, this is why there are filters of different sizes, because if you want to get different flows through a filter, yeah, then it doesn't really make sense to use a huge filter for small flows. You can use a small filter, but if you have big flows, yeah, if you have big servo motors, big cylinders somewhere, uh, then you have to use also a big uh, filter that it is able to handle the flow. So each filter element has a certain allowed flow and a certain allowed pressure difference. Okay, So there's a maximum pressure difference between the inside and outside. Inside the pressure might be higher than outside. And if at the maximum flow this maximum pressure difference shall not be exceeded. This is also something when we measure this pressure difference we can determine if the filter needs to be replaced or not. So we've, we measure the pressure here, we measure the pressure here. If the pressure difference is getting too high, we know the filter is clogged. Yeah? We need to replace the cartridge. Okay? There are also double filters where I have two cartridges next to each other. Yeah? One is in operation, one is standby. If one is clogged, I can switch over to the standby one, then the other one is in operation, and I can simply exchange the standby one without loss of, of availability of the of the hydraulic system. Yeah? Double filter it's called. Also quite used quite used yeah? double filter. So those better values here usually they have here I'm not sure if you can read there is the number with this number you can look up the data sheet. Yeah? This particular one, the six here at the end, means it's like six microns. Yeah? And the beta value, beta 7, of this particular element, beta 7 is 200. Yeah? So at seven microns, I 
have 200 times more particles here than here. Everything else is hold back. Yeah? 200 times more at the entry. Before. Huh? This is this filter. It has a maximum pressure difference of 20 bars. Yeah? That's it. And then a maximum allowed flow, I don't know anymore. But you have seen the number, you can look it up. So, uh, but you see, I have written now 50, I have written this 7. What is normal? Huh? <laughs> Everything is normal. Huh? However, usually 1 to 2 microns, 1 to 2 microns, this is really clean. Yeah? So it's, it's really the finest hydraulic systems used in aviation or something like this, 1 to 2 microns, really expensive. Yeah? Then 2 to 5 microns. Yeah? This is uh, sensitive, high power systems, uh, control and control and, and, and regulating system, something like this. High pressure things, uh, high pressure you tend to have smaller particles simply because they easier press those things in the gaps. And yeah, two to five microns, it's very high. Uh, then we have five to ten. Uh, where this filter is located. This is high quality industry, high quality industry hydraulics. Uh, so this is HQU industry. This is aviation. This is somewhere between. Yeah? HQ industry and this is HQ high pressure. So with five to ten micrometers, I can still say okay, everything is fine. Yeah, with not too high pressures. Every element can live yeah, and have a certain amount of lifespan before. Yeah. Then there are 10 to 20 micrometers. This is a common thing. Yeah, this is common and mobile. Mobile hydraulic yeah. is 10 to 20 micrometers. Then we have then. 15, 15 to 25, yeah, 15 to 25. This is heavy industry. Where you cannot get it that clean. Okay. And uh, we have, will already have limited lifespan. Huh? And 20 to, if we really had 20 to 40 yeah, microns, uh, this is low pressure low pressure system with quite a lot of gap and so on yeah. low quality low pressure systems yeah. where we simply does not care if we don't use them very often okay yeah. where is this dirt coming from yeah. well one possibility is that it was never away yeah. so if we build something there might be chips inside, there might be dirt inside, there might be also in the liquid if it's delivered something inside. So during commissioning then we have to flush those things. Yeah? We have to flush lines usually. Yeah? Usually when you build up a hydraulic system you flush the lines yeah? before it's going to operation, before reaching any valve or other thing. Uh, you flush all the lines simply to get rid of the dirt and also the filling of the tank is usually done by using a cartridge uh, filter cartridge, very fine filter cartridge and then during operation we will have some dirt which get in to, through some ceilings sucked in simply somewhere or there is wear on our system and there is then a rub falling off and so on. There are ceilings inside which are constantly rubbing. There is 
again something which can be filtered out. So during normal operation we'll also get additional dirt inside there. Yeah? This is why we really use those filters. Yeah? And now let's talk about where we have to put those filters. Yeah? Let's talk about where we have to put those filters. Yeah? There are several possibilities. Yeah? Several possibilities. If there is somewhere the tank, yeah? There is the pump. We could place a filter here. Suction line. Okay. One possibility, suction line filter. Second possibility, here. Pressure line. Okay. Going to the system. And here is the return line, third possibility, return line filter. Yeah. These are all inline filters. Yeah. So this, this is a pressure filter. It's a suction line, suction filter, it's a return line. But all are in line. Yeah. Hauptstromfilter, also in German. Yeah. All are in line. And then there is the possibility of having somewhere a filter pump. Yeah. Put a filter here, that's it. Yeah. Offline filter. Yeah. This is directly protecting. This is directly protecting the hydraulic elements, yeah, the valves and so on, which will come afterwards. This is then protecting from rub, which is coming from somewhere. Yeah. So, why? What to use? Yeah. These ones are quite expensive, yeah, because they really need to be heavy, massive, because they need to withstand the whole pressure. Not the differential pressure, not the differential pressure, but the operating pressure. Yeah? So the casing of those things needs to be really heavy, expensive solution. Yeah? Especially if they need to get bigger, yeah? because then you have bigger parts and pressure and, 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 and area is a lot of force. Okay? Pressure line field, this is a disadvantage. Otherwise, there is no disadvantage. Yeah? Otherwise, good solution. Yeah? Suction line filter would be good, yeah, because I also protect the pump and so on from any harm, from any chips or whatever. Yeah? However, usually in the pump line I already have issues with cavitation because the pressure is dropping. Now I'm building in an additional filter. Yeah? The pressure is dropping even more because I have a delta B between the pressure side and the other side. Yeah? So the, the, the thing before the filter is even lower in pressure. Yeah? That's the disadvantage of the suction line filter. Yeah? Return line filter. Yeah? Here uh, there is not a lot of delta P allowed because usually the tank line, the return line, needs to be really really low in pressure. Yeah? So if there is a flush coming back, a flush of oil from somewhere for the system coming back and we increase here the pressure difference too high, then some logic might never function like it should function because suddenly on the wrong side this element is getting pressure and the tank line shall never be under pressure. Yeah? That's the disadvantage of the return line filters. Yeah? That they need, really need to be big. There is no pressure, however they need to be big to have a small delta P. Yeah? To have even on high flows a small delta P. The advantage, of course, of the inline filters is that we really filter the oil which is used. The offline filter, whatever comes in here, we don't know yeah? if we have filtered it or not. So these are the possibilities of on, on where we can put the filters. Yeah? And we really have to take care that everything is alright, also in the casing. 
I said, yeah, inside must be in, yeah, the outside must be oil away, yeah, to have the pressure in the right direction, the pressure difference. If you're not following this, yeah, your filter element might look like this. Yeah. Whoop. Yeah. So from this side, hmm, looks quite good. From this side, yeah, it is destroyed, simply crushed yeah, by the pressure. This is how a filter looks like if it's not designed proper. However, you see, it's the same thing. Here it's closed, here's the hole. However, inside the hole you cannot really go in too fast because it's simply pressed together. Yeah. This, here, this here was even working. Yeah. It was streamed the wrong way, yeah. built in the wrong way. Yeah. This was even working. However, this was never cleaning oil, this was cleaning water. It was from a cooling system and then suddenly a lot of system needed cooling and we had increased cooling water flow and the delta B was increasing and put this together. So this is a filter, destroyed filter cartridge, working filter cartridge. Yeah, I think that's it about filters. I think you have realized now the importance of filters. Next time we're going to talk about coolers. Coolers are sometimes necessary, especially in mobile hydraulics. We will see what different possibilities we have to cool the oil. When do we need cooling? What is a normal oil temperature or liquid temperature? Depends of course on the liquid. But we will explore this next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.